At EAO, we're all about moving science forward together. And the problem is, sometimes there's just not enough evidence to really be science-based in the clinical dental practice. That's why EAO organizes every three years a consensus conference where experts from all over the world, or at least international experts, come together and debate what they say is, are the key findings that need to be implemented in clinical practice. And in this video, we're going to explore what this conference has found on the topic of drugs and diseases. And that's why I'm joined by Luis Sanchez Suarez from uh, Alicante in Spain. Luis, good morning. Yes, good morning. Hello, Gareth. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. It's a pleasure for me uh, uh, can to speak with uh, everybody about our words here in the EAO. Yes, because you've been part of the consensus conference this year in February. Can you explain a little bit what happens at the consensus conference? Yes, well, the, the, the meeting of consensus is, uh, uh, is, is very special. And it's very special for me because it's, the, uh, it's put together the point of view of different, uh, 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 of different science uh, and translate that to the, the clinical practice in the, in the more uh, uh, small part of the, of the, of the dentistry. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to, t to tell you we can uh, we we finish this uh, uh, product is a key points about the uh, about some uh, topics uh, in the science in the in the, in the different uh, topics of the of the science in the moment where we need to uh, note what happened or what what is happening with some uh, problems in the in the in, in the science of 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 or Clinic. Exactly, but uh, just to show our product, what really comes out of the consensus conference uh, are these proceedings, right? 300 pages of evidence and science that come out of the conference. Uh, however, we can imagine you don't have time to read that all. Yes. So that's why, as of today, here at EAO Congress, yes. at the EAO, EAO website slash publications, you can find this digest yes. with the key points for clinical practice. And you are working, you have been working on the group that worked on the research on drugs and diseases. What were you trying to find out there? Well, uh, drugs and diseases have three topics. The first topic was about platelet concentrates. Yeah. The second topic was about uh, titanium particles and the possibility of, of allergy or, or another problem for uh, um, titanium particles, and the third topic was about anti-resorptive uh, drugs. It's a very uh, actually uh, uh, topic about uh, dentistry. Yeah. Well, uh, it's important to know. Well, you, you was talking about this clinic uh, implant oral. Yeah. Okay. It's important you should know uh, when comes one patient to our clinic. Well, you should know this. Yeah. But sometimes it's very difficult to look in yeah. the key points about yeah. one uh, uh, topic. Yeah. For that reason, this is very important, okay? Exactly. Because if you need a rapid, a quickly, uh, uh, um, um, uh, quickly attention about some topics, well, you can look in here. For example, in the case of uh, platelet concentrate. Yeah. Let, let's highlight a few key points that uh, dentists in practice should know about. Yes. Yes. When we look at platelet contents, what is the key implication for well, practice? Well, uh, the more important uh, 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 key point here is about the evidence who su uh, supporting the concentrates of platelet. Okay. Okay. And first, and first, uh, the first time, the first things you should know, uh, uh, we have no uh, uh, um, a good evidence to uh, to s know if the Platelet concentrate is, work, is, working, uh, uh, is working to the way we want to work. Okay. okay? But uh, we uh, can uh, conclude we have no uh, negative effect about uh, the platelet concentrate. That is the first thing. So the key point for clinical practice yes. is no negative effect. No negative effect. All right. Okay. The second thing. In uh, is, for example, the use of, of platelet concentrates in the uh, sinus leaf, for example. Uh, in sinus leaf, you can, you can uh, use the platelet concentrate, but the conclusion about this consensus uh, told uh, us uh, is no a significant difference 
between the, a normal technique and the use of a, a one platelet uh, concentrate. Okay, you know? so no medical changes in the sinus lip. No, no medical. Right. Right. Before we do them all, let, let's look at the other two topics also quickly, because what you can do is you can look up this digest publication. It's very thin and, and to the point, key points for clinical practice, and it's now available in nine different languages. So that's very interesting if you're an international audience. If we look at what you guys found about titanium, uh, titanium particles and specifically the biocorrosion, what are some of the key implications there? Well, the key implication is no, if, if we have problem with allergy in, uh, with the particle of, of titanium, in this case, the conclusion is we cannot discard the allergy, but the, the, the case is, is a very limit. Okay. And the uh, specific of the symptoms about uh, allergic in titanium is very low. All right. For that reason, we cannot discard the allergy to the, t to the titanium, but you cannot think in allergy in titanium. Exactly. So, titanium. so it is something, but it's quite rare. That's yes. what the, the findings. Yes. Uh, um, the other thing is you can think, for example, I can use some tests for no if the titanium uh, produced uh, allergy in, in one patient. Well, in this case, the consensus tells us uh, it's not possible because the, the patch test and the lymphocyte stimul stimulation is not working because the, the result is false positive, have a ah. lot of false positive. So that's something very important to be aware of, right? If yes. you're in clinical practice at the moment, these yes. tests don't work and give you actually a false positive. Yes. And for the, the, the last thing, I think it's very, very important here is know if the titanium is working in the perimplantitis. And uh, we don't know. We don't know. No. It's still an open area yes. for future research. We don't know because uh, uh, the we have a lot of, part of titanium particles uh, in the human tissue, but for different factors. Can be, for example, micromotion in the moment in the of, of the implant uh, 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 placement, yeah. or for uh, good commons, uh, uh, for example, uh, one tooth uh, paste or another other products or beauty products have a lot quantity of or, or titanium particles. Exactly. So you're, you're not, not sure what the source is. Yes. You 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 know you don't know the sources. Clear. Final topic. You talked about. Anti-resorptive drugs, what is the key point for clinical practice there? Yes, the anti-resorptive drugs have a, a, is, a, is maybe one of the topic with more doubts producing in the clinic. Oh. Okay, because uh, it's very dangerous. For example, if, you, if you, your patient come to look in one solution and is taking this type of, of medication, anti-resorptive uh, medication, and you don't know if you can help the patient or produce a, a, a big problem because the patient is taking the, the, the anti-resortive uh, uh, drugs. drugs. So what should we do? Well, in that case, uh, we should know some things. The first thing is know if the doses of the medication uh, can produce uh, any problem and the time where well, the, the, um, the patient is taking the drugs yep. is important or no and the consent the conclusion is yes we should know how long is taking the medication the patient because if the medication is taking the if the medication if the patient is taking the medication for for example for 36 uh, months the problem can it can happen exactly because the 71 percent of the patient who produce any problem was taking the medication for uh, 36 months. Or longer, yes. Okay. So this should become part of the intake procedures? We should check whether people are taking these drugs? Is that the key takeaway? Yes, we, we should, we should uh, know different things. Uh, uh, a part of, the, of the, the, the time of the medication, uh, uh, you should know another factors, okay? Because it's important, I don't, I don't tell you this, I should tell you this. The anti-resortive uh, uh, drugs uh, produce a medical-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. Ah. And uh, it's a very serious problem. Exactly. And 
for that reason, we should know, for example, the, the time of the, 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 the patient is taking the drugs and other factors, because exactly. it's important. Uh, they're related between some factors and the drugs. Exactly. Clear? Well, I think with that, we're not going to cover all the clinical key points. We just wanted to tease you into understanding what the consensus conference is and what you can take away from it. So, uh, Luis, thank you very much for highlighting these key uh, uh, points from your digest in the area of drugs and diseases. If you're watching this, make sure you visit the EAO website and check out the publications. You find the digest of the consensus conference in nine different languages. You can download it, or if you're here at the EAO Congress or any of our other educational events, you can probably get your hands on a physical copy. Thank you very much for watching.